Hi everybody, it's Terry Ryder from Hot Spotting, and this is my weekly feature, The War on Media Misinformation, where I seek to respond to some of the more um, outlandish headlines and, and articles out there about the housing market, which are portraying an unreasonably sensationally negative impression about what's going on in Australian property markets around the country. And the contention I'd like to put to you today that very often the problem is not so much the article itself, it's the headline that's written on the article. Far too often I find um, with my daily research, uh, the headline on top of the article actually doesn't accurately reflect the content of the article itself. Quite often the article is, is quite reasonable with, with moderate information presenting a fairly accurate and reasonable uh, scenario of what's going on according to, to some observers or some research in the market, but the headline says something completely different. And the problem with that is, is that most people don't sit down and read articles from start to finish and actually absorb the content of what's actually being said by the people being quoted. They absorb media sound bites, they scan headlines and they gain an impression of what's going on in our various property markets from that, which is uh, the antithesis of good research, but that's what a lot of people do. And so they're getting an impression that things are very, very negative in property markets right around the country when um, that is certainly not the case. And that's happening because the, the headline is often a lie or a serious misrepresentation of what the article actually says. I'm gonna give you some examples today uh, to make my point. Here's one, which the, the headline says, Property prices will tank further, says HSBC. Tank, it's a pretty strong and emotive word, isn't it? It means that they're just going to collapse. Well, when you read the article, um, the a chief economist for HSBC, Paul Bloxham, is not actually saying that at all. He never uses the word tank or anything remotely like it. Um, what he does actually say is that overall, we're still of the view that the cooling of the housing market in Sydney and Melbourne is going to be fairly orderly. And this is what we would still call a soft landing. And that's what he said. Now, it's a long way from predicting that prices are gonna tank. Um, he predicts that um, from peak to trough, he's predicting a fall in the, the biggest city, city of Melbourne, where most of the price decline is happening. It's certainly not happening in a widespread notice, nature around the country and faced, there are more markets with prices rising than falling around Australia. That's what the research tells us. So he's saying uh, in Sydney and Melbourne, uh, a decline from peak to trough of about 12%, which is fairly normal at the end of a, a major boom. And he's expecting in these markets, the prices may fall maybe 3%, maybe as much as 8% next year. But that's Sydney and Melbourne. But yeah, I repeat that he says, we're still of the view that the cooling of the housing market in these cities is going to stay orderly. And it's what we would call a soft landing. But the headline said something completely different. Now, uh, Louis Christopher, one of the more experienced and reputable researchers, he's been around a long time and does good work uh, with, with his business, which is called SQM Research, which is one that we, we use a lot for some of the data that they publish. And um, he put out, um, their, uh, their their annual report sort of making forecasts of what they expect to come up um, in property markets next year. And um, what he always does is he presents like four different scenarios. He's got his base case scenario. This is the one that he thinks is most likely to happen. And then he presents some other scenarios which assume, well, if this happens, we'll get a different result. If something else happens. So he's got a worst case scenario and a best case scenario and a couple of other scenarios. Now. Of course, as you can imagine, what media focused on was the worst case scenario rather than his uh, base case scenario, which is the, the outcome that he thinks is most likely to happen, which is quite a moderate outcome. In fact, what um, Louis Christopher's SQM research uh, report is predicting for our major markets is that um, you know, Brisbane is going to rise moderately, um, Hobart will continue to rise quite strongly, Adelaide's going to rise moderately. Canberra's going to be rising five or six percent, um, and the bigger cities where the decline is happening, he expects um, Sydney and Melbourne uh, next year to drop maybe six percent, maybe a little bit more. So that's his his basic um, 
base case scenario. But the headlines, um, here's one headline that appeared on one of the articles that was written about this, Sydney to decline 17%, says SQM Research. Well, that's not what they said, and it's certainly not what they say in their base case scenario. Um, another one says, SQM forecast that 17% falls are likely. Well, no, that's not what they forecast at all. What they're suggesting is likely is their base case scenario, which are in Sydney and Melbourne quite moderate falls, similar to what we're getting right now. And in the other cities, uh, most of the other cities, moderate to strong rises. But that was not certainly reflected in the headlines um, that followed. And uh, yeah, there are, there are a number of media that actually misrepresented the content of the SQM prediction report by focusing on the worst case scenario and producing headlines based on that rather than on what they believe was the most likely outcome. Now here's, here's a headline which said, um, Banking Armageddon of class actions and stricter regulation a company property plunge, says UBS. So there's a lot of really... Um, Emotive stuff in that headline, Armageddon, Plunge. It comes from UBS, so they're one of those organisations that specialise in pumping out negative stuff about property as a way of drumming up publicity. It's a great attention getter if you're trying to publicise your business. Regularly say something sensationally negative about real estate, whether you believe it or not, it'll get you lots of free headlines, and of course they've been successful with that. But um, the headline, again, does not reflect the content of the article. In the article itself, um, the economists at UBS are saying under some of the, the more benign likely scenarios, um, he believes that uh, the housing market may already be through the worst of the downturn in Sydney and Melbourne. In another of their scenarios, they believe that the banking centre could muddle through a relatively hard Royal Commission fallout um, that could represent a wrap over the knuckles for the banks with house prices falling maybe 5% of Labor gets in and scraps negative gearing. So yeah, basically they're talking about fairly moderate scenarios, but the headline screams Armageddon and property plunge, and that's not what the article said. Um, here's one that says borrowers to get hit with interest rate shock. Now you would think that headline is telling you that the article will follow will talk about, um, we're about to see big interest rate rises and they're gonna shock lots of borrowers, but actually it's not about that at all. What it actually says is that interest rates, the official interest rates hasn't changed for a very long time and that um, the forecasts and indications from the Reserve Bank is that we're not gonna see any change in the official interest rates anytime soon. But eventually we'll get to a point maybe in 2020 where there may be some small rises in the official interest rates and that will come as a, a bit of a surprise or uh, a mild shock to some people because they've never actually experienced, some of the younger people out there in the housing market have never actually experienced an interest rate rise from the Reserve Bank. Um, so that's basically what the article said, but the headline was suggesting something different, that there was an interest rate shock coming up. And the story didn't say that at all. It was really about something quite different. Um, the story says that the RBA is unlikely to lift interest rates in the near future, um, but it doesn't mean that people should become complacent about paying down their debt. Uh, so there's, there's nothing in the story that actually justifies the headline. Here's another headline. It's actually been one I've seen more quite often in the last few weeks and months, house prices falling by $1,000 a week, declares the headline. Then when you read the article, um, it actually says a whole lot of different things. It's, it quotes um, an economist, Chris Richardson from Deloitte Access Economics, saying that um, they believe that a, a collapse in property prices um, is, is unlikely. Um, is predicting that maybe prices will fall 5 to 10% in Sydney and Melbourne. Again, this focus on Sydney and Melbourne to the exclusion of all other places. And he's saying, um, this is not a house price collapse. Uh, we're returning to more sensible house prices in a reasonably orderly fashion. Um, and it's not causing particular damage to the Australian economy. So that's what he actually said, and that's what the article reports. Um, and there's also some information there that in some parts, in the more expensive parts of the Sydney and Melbourne market where prices are declining, um, that amounts to an average um, 
in some location to a thousand dollars a week but you know the content of the article was actually quite benign and moderate um suggesting things are happening in an orderly fashion there's no cause for panic but the headline screamed house prices falling a thousand dollars a week just it's dishonest it's it's just inaccurate it's unbalanced and it's dishonest Here, here's a, a headline in the australian newspaper and it says house prices perfect storm okay now what actually followed was a very long article which quoted primarily um, bill moss who used to be head of property from a macquarie group um, and what he actually says in the article is that i'm not a, a negative bear on the housing market what i'm seeing is a normal correction it's not a wipeout by any means um, and he also says that it's um, a suburb by suburb story in sydney and melbourne with some areas falling further than others which is you know quite a reasonable and um quite moderate view of things so where do they get this headline talking about there's a perfect storm in house prices well actually you've got to go down to paragraph 25 of the article where somebody else is being quoted as saying the current situation facing property developers is a perfect storm because they've been affected by the banking royal commission and banks have tightened up their lending to developers and uh, there's also uh, reduced buying from foreign investors and he's saying it's almost a per perfect storm you know for people like himself working in the development space so that's paragraph 25 26 27 and a very long story um, but the actual major content of the story higher up doesn't say anything about a perfect storm um, so the headline writer in their search for sensation searched down to the bottom of the article and dredged up the most sensational thing they could find didn't reflect the content of the article at all. Um, here's one that says, Australian Stock Exchange adds its warning that house prices are going to crash. Okay, now that sounds very much to me like the Australian Stock Exchange put out uh, an announcement, a press release saying that they believe house prices are going to crash. Well, actually, that's not what happened at all. The Australian Stock Exchange didn't put out any kind of announcement or press release about prices. This is the writer's commentary piece interpreting some of the signals coming out of the stock market at the time um, and seeing various negatives which they think someone with a very bearish outlook on uh, the property markets that we're going to see um, you know house prices crashing but the headline suggests that the Australian Stock Exchange kind of officially has warned that that's going to happen and it's simply that's not what happened at all and the article doesn't say that um, even though the article itself is a, a fairly extreme pile of rubbish um, here's a classic case um, the final example i'll give you today because i think you're starting to get the picture here's a, a headline that says vacancy rate creeps back up in sydney okay that's so the the headline says very clearly that vacancies are rising in sydney but the very first paragraph of the article says the latest figures from the Real Estate Institute of New South Wales, Sydney's vacancy rates were down 0.1 of a percentage point. So the article says in the first paragraph, vacancy rates falling in Sydney. The headline says vacancies are rising in Sydney. So, I mean, I mean, how did they arrive at these results? How can, how can you have a headline saying vacancies are rising when the information in the first paragraph of the story says the opposite, even though it's a very small decline? According to these figures, uh, the vacancy rate for Sydney had dropped, but the headline said they were rising. So what can you do? Um, it, as I say, very often the problem isn't the content of the article that's creating all this negative sensation and scaring a lot of people. It's actually just the headlines, and the headlines are wrong. They're dishonest, they're inaccurate, they're unbalanced. They're not reflecting the content of the articles at all. And you sort of wonder what, what their motivation is. Um, do they not have a problem with the, the level of dishonesty and lack of integrity that they're perpetrating here and um, certainly whatever their motivation is it's certainly not to inform Australian consumers about what's really going on because uh, it's the opposite of what's happening it's misinformation of the worst kind so please be aware of that when you're uh, scanning media and absorbing sound bites that very often the sound bite that you're absorbing the headline that you're skimming um, is a lie it doesn't actually reflect the content of the article that follows and um, take the time to read the article and you'll probably get a more reasonable and balanced view of what's really going on um, so that's it for now that's um, my latest contribution to the war on misinformation I'll be doing it again at the same time 
next week and perhaps one or two times with broadcast in between. Uh, Terry Wright is signing off. Talk to you again soon.